right, welcome back to CNC Equipment's YouTube channel. We got uh, a little dozer transmission rebuilding for you today. Hey, what are you doing over there? Taping up, taping up your Christmas present? We're going to get a big dead dozer over here while you're playing in your body shop. We don't have no bulldozers? a little one out here that you tore the transmission out of. Oh, I didn't do that. So I has gone on vacation. Kevin Mason, like, Mason did it. Okay, we'll blame him. Yeah. They, uh, we got, bought this little dozer and knew it had some kind of issues. Um, it's a 450G, I'll show you here in a second, but it said after 20, 30 seconds it wouldn't pull no more. Um, you've seen us work on like that 455G. It kind of did the same thing. Suction screen strainer was clogged up on it. Some nasty, dirty oil, never been clean. So first thing I had the guys do while I was gone is pull this one out and check it. I'll drop a picture in it of it uh, right here. As you can see, it's got uh, some little red pieces of clutch material, disc material. So if you guys don't know, these are a conventional four speed power shift transmission, meaning they have clutch packs, steel plates, and fiber plates. So those red pieces that you've seen are the uh, transmission clutch disc. I've had enough of these know what to look for on them so I told the guys I said stop what you're doing I think they drained oil out of it um, Randy washed it off and uh, what we're gonna do is pull a transmission on one of these I know you guys have seen us uh, in the past we've had a couple issues steering clutches inside the back here but uh, this time we're gonna be pulling the whole transmission out and do a whole complete rebuild on this dude so Hunter's got big mo out here and uh, we're gonna pick this thing up so this forklift's ready to at uh, 30,000 pounds, this little dozer weighs around 16,000 pounds, so not going to be much of an issue. We do have some leverage sticking out here, so he's going to come under here and pick her right up and set her in the shop. Get up as close as we can. Tilt her back a little bit. All right, we're gonna go right in that center bay. Drive forward. under two you guys don't know I got some trucks for sale I did just bring this one in today this is a uh, I think it's an 87 kind of like the ambulance sitting here but this has a uh, 351 gas engine in it, but it is four-wheel drive Conaline E350 it does have a Dana 60 under it so get me up Guys, they're in. I'd sell that one cheap. It does run and drive. Take transmission out. So 
I was just talking to Hunter here. Um, we've got to actually bust the tracks apart on this model to um, pull the transmission out, and I'll show you why here. I explained when I bought some of these in a, a few previous videos ago when I uh, we went over to Matt with Diesel Creek here and uh, dropped a processor off. I bought a couple of these 450Gs at the auction, not this one, but uh, I kind of explained the differences. You notice this is just a 450G, it doesn't say it's a long track, so it's a standard track machine. With that being said, the final drives up here closer, long track would be setting back. It's what they call a double reduction. So on those long track ones, this little plate that's back in here is actually sitting up here. Basically the sprockets move back about six inches or so, making for an extra roller and making that long track. So on those, you can get to that plate because the sprocket is sitting back here and you can literally pull those transmission shafts out, which I'll show you that here after a bit what we're going to do on these since it's a short track we've got to bust the track apart so we can get this sprocket off and once we do that we can get access to that plate there's a, a shaft in that transmission we'll pull it completely out then the one that goes in the other side we'll put a rod through and pull it leave it inside the transmission and then that transmission basically we take that plate off it just slides right out so these things are super simple to work on um, like I said I knew this had a transmission issue and I'm real familiar with these and know how they work, so I'm not scared of issues like that. I actually got all the parts sitting here for it. So another thing, it's kind of rare. This tractor is pretty late model. It's around a 97, 98 model, and it's actually a direct drive transmission. If you watched that previous video, I told you guys there's two different models of these 450Gs. Um, I have a torque converter, which is more like a car. You put it in gear and push down the brake pedals, it's going to stop. The direct drive, you put it in gear it's going to kill the engine if you push the brake pedals down. So you get a little more power out of them this way. Um, a little more simpler. You got a lot more room in here. If you guys can see, we got a longer drive shaft. We had a torque converter on here. These hydraulic pumps would be mounting it and this drive shaft would be quite a bit shorter. So that transmission sits from this housing back, but uh, I think Hunter's going to grab our track press. The reason is these are dry tracks. I think I just said that we've got to drive this pin out with the press. Um, this dozer only has like 2,400 hours on it or so. It come from uh, another government townships bought it, but uh, it's all original undercarriage. You guys can see it's sitting pretty tall, blade face is nice and clean, so it's one of the reasons we're putting some money in this older tractor. And of course, Kevin, the guys will uh, fix it up, paint it up, make it look all nice and pretty once we get it working right. So, you gonna grab a track press down? Yep. We keep it up there. So, I know a lot of people. We're bashing us last time, but we just had that pump. Remember the hand pump you got to pump it up? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've got a power pack that's been sitting under there for like a year. A way simpler than that? We're probably going to use that. I don't know about today, but maybe in the mornings it's getting kind of late. But uh, no more pumpy pumpy. Right. And I'll explain that situation. Uh, a lot of people saying I would just use hydraulics off my forklift. They don't realize the track press we're going to get out, it requires 10,000 PSI of oil pressure, which any machine pretty much is not going to put out there in that 3,500 pound range or so. So it's very high pressure. So I do have a uh, pump here. We'll see if we can get it hooked up and working. So, all right, we got a track press. You guys have been watching my channel for a while. You've seen us use this thing a couple times. It's made to press these uh, dry tracks. And when I say dry tracks, they make two kinds of tracks. I've explained this in the past, but these are dry. So they're just a pin and a bushing in there, no lubrication or anything. The uh, sealed and lubricated ones actually have oil around that pin and bushing in there and they'll have that alligator link where the uh, bolts just go through and bolt the track together. But unfortunately on these dry style rails, they don't have that. So we got to shove a pin out. Um, we're going to take a couple pads off, get that stuff out of the way. And uh, you guys might see we've got a big old gob of grease here. And you might see we got some other issues going on here. We've got broken bolts, sledgehammer time. I know what that means. You know what that means? That's right, new undercarriage. We've got a frozen idler, so what that means, if you guys watched my videos, I think about a year ago we was working on the 850J, man, we had the wrecking ball out. That's right, getting the job done. So what uh, what's going on is this thing is rusted to this rail here, and they've probably been uh, trying to hit this with a hammer. You kind of see the tracks are a little bit loose, but uh, I tried to grease it up, it wouldn't move. I did try the other side, it's moving back and forth fine. Um, they've not been beating on it, but it's what happens when you have something older. This machine's uh, 30, 25, 30 years old, and it has low hours and stuff we deal with all the time buying government surplus stuff. So low hours are good, but you're dealing with stuff like this. So we're gonna bust this side of the track apart um, since it's all messed up. So 
I think we'll probably mess the idler a little bit later on in the video. Main goal is to get the track off, get that sprocket off, and get the transmission pulled out and make sure we don't need more parts. So, you ready to take some pads off? These look real fun too. Let me guess, you're not holding it. You done let it slip, it's torch time. That's right, Bob. Got it? Go ahead. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> let me get another angle. Another one. Um, Give up on that one. Yeah. How about a snap on impact? We'll see if it busts it loose. You guys don't know we're doing a uh, Harbor Freight tool giveaway. We've got a complete toolbox that we're giving away, full of uh, Harbor Freight tools over here. Link in the description on how to win that, but. Uh, we're going to try these things out for a year. It's been about almost six months or so. Probably do a little update review on them, how they've been holding up. So we'll replace all those tools and make sure whoever wins it gets new tools too on the power stuff. So every once in a while, the old earthquake impact won't uh, won't quite do it well. Are we ready? Sure. I'll get this on reverse. You need one for straight end on it. Yeah. All right, you ready for the snap on? Yep. It's trying. So it did break it loose. At least things this is what a little bit strong we've had a few occasions where the snap on will bust stuff loose um, we can either get a three quarter inch impact and bust them off or I may just um, torch them whenever you see the thread sticking out past the end of the bolts like that it's a good sign they're not going to come off so um, what happens when those threads stick down there they get all rusty and dirty and stuff and they just gall up when you try to take them off because these are fine thread bolts but so that's another thing people come in here we do undercarriages all the time and they're um, asking how much labor it takes to take them off well sometimes you can just bust there and take them all off can't you that's right and that's the good ones and then other times you run into stuff like this where you've got to get a big old impact or torch them off or what have you so it's always hard to price that labor out so i'm just gonna let's just grab a torch we'll buzz those off and uh fix this problem all right got those pads off i don't know if you guys can see out here but it's uh i know these videos are behind it's the end of june right now you guys can kind of see the sun's not been shining here for a couple days we got smoke and haze outside it's all from the canadian wildfires that's blowing down we're in indiana isn't that crazy that's crazy I feel like a thousand miles away or something maybe not that far i think you've been burning too much power 600 miles i don't know but it's i know it's kind of hard to see on camera but it's like a haze you can't see nothing you can even smell the smoke but it's crazy it's blown that far away so we're gonna get a track press put up here and uh hopefully push that pin out all right i've been hooking up this pump this comes from a company called beaver i actually bought this with my own money about a year ago they since reached out to me and uh gave us a few things the impact and a couple other things and the tool's been okay pullers but went to go fire this pump up and using it and it's leaking oil between this block here manifold there's four o-rings in here and they've got the hole milled out too deep on one of them you can see i tried to get some different o-rings in there but that one here it's closest to us right here that is not sticking up far enough to seal so we're uh we're gonna put a little sealant on there aren't we that's right we tried some bigger o-rings they're sticking up too much so i don't know the quality is not the best there i could probably reach out to them let them know but i did buy that for my own money so be careful with what you buy i've not even tried it yet we'll see if it's even got enough pressure to uh blow that out but i'm kind of concerned about that already so you ready How much pressure you got on it? 1,000. 2,000. Keep going. Now yeah, she's trucking. That's 2,000. Yeah, keep going. 2,000. It's trucking now. Let off of it and let it straighten up. Go 
go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah, all right, keep trucking. Yeah, it's probably going through the other side here now. Okay. We'll go ahead and press it all the way out. See the pin coming out of the other side there. Keep going? Yeah, keep going. Keep going. That's it. Oh, we got her, Bubby. Did she leak? It didn't even leak. It didn't even leak. We put a little Loctite 515 on her. Let's go ahead and uh, reverse this operation. There's the pin. So they'll have a smaller inner diameter. These outsides are tight where it fits in there. She's nice and warm. You did the job, didn't it? That's all right. Back that up, and we'll get the track apart here shortly. You doing the honors there, bud? I'll do it. Hit her right there and she should pop off. On the pad? Mm hmm. Oh, we hit it like a stepchild. <laughs> I'll hit you. You better watch out. Get out of the way. Woo, you're scaring me. Hang on there. That ought to be coming apart easier than that. I'll bet the uh, washers are probably stuck in there. Let's get a pry bar in there and pry that out. All right, we got the track apart. We got some pins up under here. We're gonna go ahead and drag this back. Fork clip. Go ahead, Hunter. Hopefully these pins will stay in there. Lost the pin, bud. Whoa, bud. Let's rehook your chain. And then you can pull it the rest of the way off. Oh, you just jammed up that chain, something fierce. That's not good. You jammed my chain up. All right. We'll get these sprocket bolts out of here next. And then we can get access to this little cover. working on taking that little triangle cover off we'll pull it out and then uh, there'll be a small shaft in there we can pull out we'll get this back plate off here next take the hitch off from that back plate and I'll show you how we'll pull some axle shafts out of there all right we got that off there's shims on here to set bearing preload that grease in there's probably when they assembled it brand new from the factory in the 90s isn't that crazy and then this should pop out of here I have to get a little wiggler jiggler. Set that up here on top of the tank. Gotcha. And you should be able to wiggle that out. We 
gonna have to screw a shaft in and help pull it out. Kaka. That's right. Got white stuff in there. Uh, the water, milky. Okay. Yeah, get that out of the way. All right, back plates off here. We got a transmission in here. Just the big old gasket. You guys notice that red fluid, that's actually probably original John Deere fluid. But what happens over time, somebody's probably never changed this. It's got moisture and stuff in there, and it's uh, tore up those transmission discs. Right there's one right there. So, uh, I gotta keep her oil changed. You get a little bit of moisture in there. These older ones, it seems like it releases a glue, it messes them up. But uh, just a little bit of residue in there. All right. Next thing we gotta do, we've gotta run some screw jacks up. You know what that is? Yeah, that is a bolt right there. No, so yeah. under each one of these steering clutches, I'll get a light in there where you guys can see there's a little pedestal under there. And we can uh, crank a screw up. It's gonna hold that that uh, steering clutch up. That way we can pull our shafts out. So Alright, so Mr. Hunter's under there. There's that pedestal way back there. Um, he took the plug out, it's just a pipe plug, it's got a half inch square in it. So we're going to take the plugs out both sides and then we'll take a uh, hex key wrench, screw up there. There's actually a screw in there. It's going to wedge right up underneath that steering brake and steering clutch assembly and it will hold it up. And once it does that, you guys can see there's a shaft that goes through there. So we'll start on that side over there, we'll pull that shaft completely out. And then we'll take this shaft and pull it out where it's sitting inside the transmission and leave it inside there. And then we can literally take these two bolts off here, these four bolts, and we just got to undo a manifold. There's like three 10 millimeter headed bolts here in that manifold line. This whole transmission slides out just that easy. So most of your dozers from this era, 80s and 90s, um, would have in all previous generations, most of your cats and everything else back then, you were taking all the sheet metal and stuff off pulling the tranny out from the floorboards and up that way it's a lot harder to do so when they come out with this design in 1988 it's far superior now if we didn't have to bust a track in this thing I would have had that transmission laid out in that table I'm probably halfway apart by now but uh, the old track was fighting us but uh, just your 450G short tracks um, your 455 track loaders 555 track loaders you're going to have to bust a track on them. Um, I think all your 550s are long tracks, so you should be fine. 650Gs, uh, 450G long tracks, you won't have to bust a track apart. Makes it a lot quicker, but literally you can have this transmission out in 45 minutes if you don't have to take the uh, track apart. But uh, We'll get these screwed up in a second. Alright, Hunter's got a 3 8 Allen wrench in there. You should be cranking it up here shortly. You can see that coming up right there. You just screw it up my hand right now. Should be making contact soon. And you're just going to snug that up a little bit. So he's going to put a little tension on that to kind of hold that up. Take the pressure off those shafts there. And then those can all stay in there while we pull the transmission out. That's probably good, Hunter. Okay. That's all it takes. Alright, we'll get the other side done and get ready to pull the training out. Oh my god. Alright, Hunter just pulled that out. <laughs> yeah. Good job. So that's a pinion shaft that drives the final drive right here. So this should turn freely now if it's not locked to the brake of the transmission. 
So we pull that out and set that set that up here out of the way. Stuff looks like new, it should. It don't have any hours on it. Then we've got what's this 12 millimeter bolt on here? You're gonna go yeah. through that hole and I'm gonna show those people where you're going. You're gonna thread into the end of that other shaft on her. So he's right in there if you guys can see. Get that threaded in there nice and far. Yeah. And he's gonna pull this shaft out right here. You got her, don't you? Pull that all the way out. Twist it. Go down a little bit. There you go. Well, we've got one more shaft just like it in there. He's going to thread the rod in it and pull it inside the transmission and it's going to stop. It won't pull all the way out and we'll leave it in there. And then this is ready to come out. I already took these two bolts out here. There's a little keeper plate on here and there's four little bolts there. And these two washer bolts. She's ready to slide out. Alright, now he's going all the way through to about the center of the transmission. We should see this shaft move once he gets threaded in there. Tell me when you're going. Yeah. Nope, there he goes. That's it, right there. Leave that in there. Nope, push her back a little bit. Right, nope. No unthread her. That one just stays right in there like that. It's just that easy. All right, Hunter's coming in here with the forklift. Got a fork slid all the way together. You're gonna go right under here on that piece right there. Come on down. Got her forklift in there, we got a chain tied on that, so that's gonna help pull it out. We put her in reverse, and we're gonna go back real slow. Go up a little bit. Alright, back up. Go down a little bit. Go up a little. All right. Back on up. Good transmission. Alright, so, so there she be. Pretty simple setup. These are just manifold lines for your four speed, uh, four gears, and forward and reverse. Pretty simple there. It's got a basic ring and pinion. I'll show you guys more of that when we get it up on the bench. But uh, yeah, here's the back case. It's just a big old hollow case. These things hold a lot of oil, so it keeps them cool, makes them last long. Steering clutches and brakes, they look excellent, which they should. Got plenty lying on there's a little bit of surface rust on there but that won't hurt, hurt anything so we got an input shaft right here that comes from that engine that's what turns that transmission so yeah a little peek inside we'll get all that cleaned up all that good stuff so you guys always know i preach about these things they're so simple as far as that coming out and these things in my opinion is pretty simple to rebuild i can see already We've got some uh, issues right in here. So this top pack is our forward and reverse. There's three clutch packs in here, three main shafts. This one's forward and reverse. We got first and second on one and third and fourth on another. So 
this one takes a lot of abuse because it goes forward and backwards but I can see there's clutch disc missing under those plates are a different color actually burnt and hot there um, another gear it drops out of them a lot they get a lot of wear and tear is second gears that get you used a lot in them so but uh, those aren't looking too bad but being old as it is and the way the oil looked we'll go through and replace all the transmission disc and uh, make it all right for the next owner you know, I had a lot of people ask me how much this stuff costs and I probably will share the numbers on this one um, since this is my own tractor and it's not anybody's yet so you guys watched your previous videos on the newer dozers that have the hydrostatic transmissions um, those things are pretty costly to repair and replace you can spend pretty quick twenty thirty thousand dollars in the back of one of those if not more sometimes so these um, somewhere in the neighborhood of seventy five hundred dollars you can go through the whole back into one but uh, they're just a lot more simpler don't need any special tools you don't have to send stuff off to somebody you can do it all in-house so we'll get this up on the bench and uh, I don't know if we'll get it tore apart today it's getting kind of late here so I'll be back in the morning all right it's the next day here I got the tranny up on the table but I'm gonna leave you guys in suspense um, where's gonna be another video on rebuilding this thing so you guys can uh, make sure you're subscribed and follow along to see that but We've still got, we got more footage, don't we? That's right. Mr. Hunter went to football practice. Can you believe that? I can't. I got stuck with this guy. You're welcome. He won't worry about what's over here. That's right. So we're going to tackle this uh, idler. I like when I take my transmission apart, I like to take them apart and rebuild them all together in one wax. So we're going to go ahead and get this done here. Do you see this funness right down here? No. See that big old sledgehammer mark? No. You know what that means, don't you? We might have to get the wrecking ball out. Uh oh. So yeah, now I even tried to pump this full of grease, and guess what happened back here? The seal blew out. Oh. Yeah. So uh, I guess we'll get started and take these bolts. There's missing one because somebody got carried away with the sledgehammer. And uh, we'll try to get this thing freed up. Might even take it out and put a new one in it if we. Uh, I've got some in stock since they've been beating and hammering on it. So it's going to be a great time, I can tell. <laughs> Uh, we got the bolts out of here. These are supposed to fall off, but I think it got forged. What do you call it? Forged in fire over here? Yeah. Bud, you're going to hit me. <laughs> Get your hand out. Okay. <laughs> I like when you hold it. I didn't want nobody to see your fingers because I'll make fun of you again. <laughs> <laughs> that was what you talked about. My fingers are perfectly normal. I don't see nothing wrong here. Mm. Man, they warped shims and everything, didn't they? Yeah. Mm. I know a guy's got new ones, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Time. So, I get some power loop. What's happened? This thing's rusted. To this rail more than likely. We start spraying and we probably need to go ahead and unbolt this. They broke one bolt off here, don't we? Oh, yeah. We might be able to get a port of power in here too. She's rusted. Mm. We well, can always get out the wrecking ball though. That's right. Get moved. Mm -mm. You got two choices. Hot wrench. Or Miley Cyrus. Or Miley Cyrus. Kevin's going to be riding it. Which ah. one are we getting? You know I like Miley Cyrus. So. The old wrecking ball coming back to action? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It'll be wild. It will be. We'll go get the old wrecking ball. We'll take that port of power out. So I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing. About fell over that. Come in here and we'll hit that with the wrecking ball a few times. Hopefully knock that loose and we can get it... Uh, Yanked out of there. All right, I'm gonna go grab the machine. Kevin's gonna go find the wrecking ball. I'm gonna get the little 85. I think it might pick it up, maybe. Make sure it's got a hook to hook it up to. Should be good. You guys see, it's like um, 8.30 in the morning. It should be pretty light out, but we do have some storms rolling in, but it's freaking smoky again today from those Canadian fires. Crazy.
think Miley's gonna get it done. I don't think we got enough room for Miley. Did it move? You about got the chimney to move on that side. Oh. Well, that's a good. We get those things out. That'll help. These shimmies. Mm -hmm. You got a hammer? We can hit some of those. Yeah. Definitely not moving. We got a crack on that side and got all the shims out of it, so that's promising. What about this side, bud? Mm. What if I come in here sideways? What and if get you this? need to Miley this Miley. side? Miley Cyrus on the side? Yeah. Boy, that'd be a wild ride right here. Oh. Think our people want to sit there? We'll put you right here. I just want to know when you're going to ride the wrecking ball. That's for the uh, encore. Oh, for the what are those called, like the OnlyFans or whatever? <laughs> they gotta get a subscription to that. Got me. Miley time again? Yeah. Okay. Come on, Miley. Try it from the front again. Oh, that's good right there. Nope. <laughs> you bounce off the track. Up oh, just a smidge. There you go. I saw the front move. I think it moved. Yeah. Yeah, let's look. Yep, I see the front moving. Good job, Miley. Yeah, you 
got shims coming out here now. Yeah, I think they were. I think we're getting somewhere. Where you want me to hit it at? Up on the top of the wheel. My is all greasy. Hey, do you want to tell everybody how your Harbor Freight chisel broke? It just you, snapped in two. You did it. What do you mean I did it? It you was just it sitting in there. It wasn't, it wasn't even nothing you attached took, to it. No, you took Miley and broke it. I don't know what you're talking we'll about. We'll sharpen it back up. But we're going to try to yank these shims out here, maybe with the slide hammer. They're moving around. We're getting somewhere. Did you show them our invention? What's that? Well, oh, my vice grips on the slide hammer? Yeah, you got to use the original vice grips. I learned that from Dad a long time ago. <laughs> We got a porter power out. You guys can see maybe we're getting it to walk out here, so we're just gonna keep doing that. It's probably good on that side, Kevin. We'll uh, loosen this up. Oh, it come back to life. It's moving at least. It wasn't doing that a little bit ago. Uh, your save the My world. Save the world excavator shutting off again. I hear it beeping. Oh. The world's about to leave. Sorry. She shut off. We're, we're, just we're saving. To save butterflies, brother. Canadians. Oh, did you hear that? I did. Oh yeah, she's moving. Oh yeah, look at that. You're just walking the dog now. You know you can't beat the old wrecking ball. This thing was in retirement for like 25 years, and I brought it out this year, last year. Look at you go. Well, I like to see. Things moving. Who ever would have thought you'd use a wrecking ball in a shop environment? Probably ought to get to the other side. I wonder if Harbor Freight sells wrecking balls. Uh, yeah. All right, we're going to keep on keeping on here, and we should have an idler out shortly. We'll go find a new one. What did you run away for? <laughs> the old power loop. The power loop, man. Power loop everybody. that's going to come spinning around like a bomb. <laughs> F you, you yeah, little idler. <laughs> All right. Always have your work site ready. Yeah, I was kind of over it. Well, thumbs up for the wrecking ball again. That's right. 
Mr. J went to go get us an idler next door. We're going to get all this cleaned up. We got to pull that yoke out and put new seals in it. Probably should do that with the excavator. Yes. All right, that's next. Look who comes to our rescue. All right. Hey, what do you know? She's stuck. Oh, wrong hand. Starting to rain. Did you tell these people about Canada polluting us? I mean, there should be sun right there. No, it's over there. No, it's over there. No fireball to be found. Yeah, that's true. Alright. Back in here. Yeah. There she comes. Nice and easy. It's nice having all these extra tools around in our toolbox. Uh, this is a John Deere. No, but it's pretty close. They're like sister companies. All right, we got the new idle there. I got new shims, some used shims new wear plates kevin's over here putting some new seals in this yoke that we just took out and this is uh while we got it apart we might as well put them in there it was actually blowing pressure back out too how you doing there doing got good. your dollar 99 picks from harbor freight that's right we'll get those put in there and then we'll get uh idler shimmed up you guys have seen us do that before a few times basically we've got a block in here and there's some shims under there we got to shim that up to that rail. We're going to keep about a sixteenth inch of clearance uh, up and down, left and right, and all that stuff. So and we'll get that put back in there. Love my hand. Are you bleeding? Yeah, bub. You got some of that good red grease on there. You're right, ready to slide your yoke home. ET yoke home. Here we go, bub. You got the uh, fitting out of it, or? I might want to take this here fitting out. Bob, I don't need a three quarter because I got man hands. Didn't he shoot somebody or is that his brother or something? No, I don't know. Accidentally or what was that? Oh. Steven Seagal's retired. Yeah. Hey, I think we need to get a half inch drill bit and ring through this hole where they uh, went to Hammertown right here. What? Then we'll slide our idler in there. I got our uh, wear bars on the bottom. We got some shims in there. And uh, we'll put some shims on the top too once we get her in there. Did you see the power? The Harbor Freight power? Do you want to tell them about our um, air chisel? What about it? Well, I broke that, but oh, here's... I don't want to throw it away. Our air hammer. Yeah. What happened to it? You lost the butt on the end of it? The butt plug fell out? Yeah, and then it had no power. It had no power. So now we're anyway. going to make a Uzi handle for it so you can two-hand it. How about that? We already put that in there. Track it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Get on my train, people. Mm. Bob, your train's got to go up.
There we go. Funny. I always like to put my bolts on the inside of the idler first because sometimes these yokes get spread or wedged. It's a lot easier to uh, bend and manipulate this outside than it is the inside. Did he honk at us? No. One, two, three, four engines. Ooh. Oh, oh, he's shutting her down. You hear it? Uh-uh. He's lowering down. Hey, the train's coming by. We're standing here looking at it. You want to look at it with us? Are you bidding on stuff? How's that going for you? <laughs> three wheel drive. We don't need a three wheel drive Kubota. <laughs> no, thank you, sir. All right, we got her all bolted up. I got some shims in here. We got a shim under there. We got about a 16th inch of plank. Kevin's putting a grease adjuster in there. So when we get ready to slide the old tranny back in there. I guess I got to quit saying tranny. Somebody brought that up in a pump. Oh, I don't know. And then they start saying things about Bud Light and all that other stuff. Anyway, we're going to wrap this one up here. The next video on this machine, we'll be uh, rebuilding this transmission. I should have all the parts and snap rings and seals for it. So we're going to kind of take it apart, rebuild each section as we go. So if you guys want to see that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. And uh, hopefully the next video, this little tractor's running and we don't have carnage like we do on these things over here starting to look like a dozer shop again. You tell that train to F off. That's right. That's what they do in Australia at Cutting Edge Engineering. Really? But uh, yeah, we appreciate everybody watching and uh, we'll be back real soon. See you guys next time.